Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us here for Crampton News First at Four. I'm Whitney Ward. We are just days away now until the Sir Paul McCartney makes his Spokane debut. His North American Got Back Tour kicks off this Thursday at the Spokane Arena. Crampton News Janelle Finch is joining us now live here in the studio to share more on what fans are saying and what they're looking forward to most later this week. Hi, Janelle. Hi, Whitney. Sir Paul McCartney is one of the biggest names in the entertainment industry to grace the stage at the Spokane Arena. Arena officials say fans are flying in from across the world, including Japan, Sweden, and England. One fan from Utah will be coming to Spokane for his first time, but not his first Paul McCartney show. Nathan Gedge is flying in to see Sir Paul McCartney play for his 22nd time. He says he's seen McCartney's every U.S. tour. Gedge lives in Salt Lake City where he says he's seen McCartney perform twice. That means to see the living legend, Gedge often has to fly to catch him live. But for a super fan like him, he says no distance is too far to see Paul on stage. I've seen him all over from, you know, L.A. to, to New York. I've seen him, you know, a performance with Ringo Starr, you know, the two surviving Beatles. Um, it's just amazing music. He's really inspired me. So, I mean, how many more opportunities are we going to get, especially three years since 2019 when I last saw him, um, you know, with the pandemic and everything. This was definitely a tour I was not going to miss. According to his concert website, McCartney's Got Back Tour marks the first series of live shows since July 2019. Gedge says going to the Sp he's going to the Spokane show alone, but plans to see McCartney again at his last tour stop in New Jersey with his son. McCartney's next stop on the tour includes two shows in Seattle. The Spokane Public Facilities District told Krem 2 when tickets went on sale back in February, they sold out in 30 minutes. Since then, the Spokane Arena has released more tickets. Arena officials say 8,000 tickets have been sold. To see what seats are still available, look on TicketWest.com. In the studio, Janelle Finch, Krem 2 News. Janelle, before you go, um, you were talking about people literally coming because this is the, the kickoff for his tour, coming from all around the world, not just here in the U.S. or even just the, in the Northwest. Right, absolutely. It's a huge deal. Like I said, people are coming in from Japan, England, Sweden. Of course, we know our friends up north from Canada are coming down. And of course, across the U.S., Washington, Idaho, California, even fans are coming in from New York. So it's definitely going to be a pretty packed event. It's going to be pretty fun. Janelle, thank you very much. And as the city is getting ready for Paul McCartney, he is getting ready for the fans. And he wants to know what you want to hear. He tweeted out this request to fans here in Spokane saying, what would you like to see on the set list? And there's a lot to choose from, he said, from all the years of the Beatles to his solo career. We also want to know what you are hoping to hear. So text those suggestions to us at 509-448-2000. All right, Jeremy, um, we were talking about this earlier. The obvious one that you want to hear from Paul McCartney is... Here comes the sun! Yes, I would like to see the yeah. sun as well. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the one if you're <laughs> in weather. But, you know, really, uh, how about Eleanor Rigby? That's got to be probably my favorite Beatles song. So it many just, classics. Yeah, it, it just resonates with me for some <laughs> odd reason. So maybe I'm throwing that one on, but definitely Here Comes the Sun, because if we step outside... Ah, not right now, but just wait. Here comes the sun. It's behind a fair weather cumulus cloud right now. And look at the wind over in Coeur d'Alene. Quite breezy. Expect that wind to die down over the course of the next few hours. By the time the sun goes down tonight, we'll basically be done with the worst of it. Wind out of the southwest gusting to about 28 miles per hour right now. By the time the sun goes down, those gusts will top out near 20, so a lot, lot lighter. Temperatures hanging out in the 50s right now in Spokane and Coeur d'Alene, 46 in Sandpoint, 61 in Moses Lake, and 58 in Wenatchee. We've got a couple of pop-up showers, bulk of those kind of following the similar line activity that we've seen in recent systems, and that's going to be the case throughout the evening. Most of us don't really get anything. It's just kind of those isolated showers after the storm itself. So tomorrow morning, a few more, but then those move out. We dry out throughout the day on Wednesday, and then, yeah, there's more active weather later on this week. But keep in mind, tomorrow morning winds up quite chilly. Many of us falling down into the low 30s once again. Few spots under a frost advisory. We'll talk about that here in just a bit. But for now, know that tomorrow looks very similar today to today, but with a lot more sunshine. Well, that is what it sounds like when your catalytic converter has been stolen. It's a crime that's on the rise here in Washington and in Spokane. So now we're seeing just how easy it really is for criminals 
to steal those catalytic converters right out from under your car. A Spokane man's security camera recently captured that very moment when his was stolen just last weekend. The motion censored security camera captured the video of someone crawling under his car and just moments later they were walking away with the catalytic converter. It was that fast. The owner, Greg Thomas, says this is now going to cost him about $2,000 in repairs. In the meantime, he's borrowing a friend's truck to get around. He told our Amanda Rowley he can't believe how quickly those thieves can get away with such an important piece of your car. It couldn't have taken him more than five minutes. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that shocking to you how easy it is to, to get to it and take off with it? It is. <laughs> it's really shocking. Spokane police continue to investigate these crimes. They have made some arrests. The department says making those arrests, though, is a priority as the crimes are affecting livelihoods in a variety of negative ways. And one of the main reasons that people are stealing catalytic converters is to then sell it for the precious metals that are inside. A new law will be going into effect to try and make things harder for thieves to make money off of those thefts. Starting in July, there's a new state law that will prohibit cash transactions for those converters, so sellers would then be paid by check three days after a sale. Well, here's something to pay attention to. More than 120,000 pounds of ground beef now being recalled over E. coli fears. The recalled products include Nature's Reserve, uh, Thomas Farms, Tajima Beef Patties, and Marketside Butcher Wagyu Beef. U.S. Department of Agriculture's Food Safety and Inspections said that the beef comes from Lakeside Refrigerated Services. It was produced between these dates, January or February 1st and April 8th. So take a look at any labels you might have in your fridge or freezer. There have been no confirmed reports of illness from eating the meat. The problems were discovered during routine testing of imported products. Well, last night, the Spokane City Council members passed a resolution to limit shelter beds at new prospective homeless shelter sites. Plans to open a site on East Trent have hit several snags, and now some are blaming City Council members for getting in the way of Mayor Nadine Woodward's plans. The City Council had a long meeting last night, and several people got very heated, accusing City Council members of just getting in the way of progress. Many of you here are very quick to oppose every effort the administration has presented. What I see here on this board and is, is an attempt at organized chaos. It doesn't work. You, I feel, me, have failed the people of Spokane. There has been no proposal brought forward to council. There has been no contracts, no lease. There has been nothing that has come forward to us that we are slowing down. Now, council member Jonathan Bingle agreed with some of that criticism, pointing out that council did not approve an emergency zoning ordinance the Trent site needs. Now, council members say uh, they will have to revisit the issue, and councilwoman Betsy Wilkerson says the mayor's office has yet to give them a price of how much this shelter will cost. The city administrator says those details should be available by next week. A jury trial for former state representative Aaron Von Ellinger began today in Idaho. Von Ellinger is accused of raping a 19-year-old legislative intern last year. Today focused on jury selection. Some potential jurors were excused for their personal experiences with sexual assault or the experiences of someone they know. Jane Doe is the unnamed victim. She says the former lawmaker took her out to dinner and then assaulted her in his apartment. The House Ethics Committee recommended that he be suspended for the rest of his term, but he resigned from the legislature before there could even be a vote. Von Ellinger denies any wrongdoing. Well, you still have a few more hours, about four hours to be exact, to drop off your ballot for today's City of Spokane special election. Voters will be deciding on Proposition 1, which is asking to renew a tax levy to pay for emergency medical services. That proposition would cost homeowners 50 cents per $1,000 on the value of their home. If passed, emergency medical services could get about $13 million. Spokane Fire Chief Brian Schaefer says without that money, the community could see a decrease in fire department resources and staffing. Opponents, though, say the department should use the funds it already has before asking for more.
Pfizer is asking the FDA to authorize COVID boosters for kids 5 to 11 years old. This comes as new data shows 5 to 11 year old could, ben could benefit from another kid sized shot. The CDC estimates three and four kids have already had COVID and right now cases are rising among kids all across the country. There is also now renewed attention on vaccines that are common for children. Early data from the South Central Public Health District in Twin Falls, Idaho, reports general vaccine rates among children actually declined over the last two years, and that puts children and teens at risk for vaccine preventable diseases like measles, mumps and whooping cough. Vaccines prevent disease. Um, they are, we do see that in our vaccine um, rates prior to COVID that we We've seen a decline of diseases over the, the years. Um, so it, they prevent disease and it also helps prevent um, disease um, exposure for individuals who can't be vaccinated yet, those little babies or young children. Epidemiologists say, especially if you plan on traveling, make sure that you are up to date on all of your vaccines. If you and your family have any questions about those childhood immunizations, talk to your doctor about your concerns. Well, this week, Inland Northwest veterans are in Washington, D.C. for this year's honor flight. We're giving you a close-up look at their memorable trip coming up next.